of, a, of Galilee at that time, man. So he came and put his hand, and he tried to stretch with his hands against the apostles and the elders and kill them. Pretty much that's what it's saying. Go ahead. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And he killed James, the brother of John, by the edge of the sword. So James, matter of fact, hold that. And uh, somebody grab uh, Matt, oh, sorry, Mark chapter uh, Mark chapter 10. Start at like uh, verse 30. Mark chapter 10, like verse 30 or like 35. Because man, uh, read that verse again, Prophet uh, Kishon. Verse two, and he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. Uh -huh. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Right. So Herod stretched forth his hand, and he killed James, uh, the, the brother of John, with the edge of the sword. Because the scripture tells us that when thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. All right. So with that being said. It was at that time, um, it was at that time where James, he got he got killed for the word of the Lord, man, being a, what's, what's called a martyr, okay? Matter of fact, it's gonna be Mark chapter 10, yeah, verse uh, verse 35. Um, yep. And James, yep. this is Mark 10 and 35. And James and John, the sons of Zebedee, come unto him, saying. And then that, that come unto him is talking about Yahweh Shai, all right? So James and John were brothers. And they came to Yahweh Shai. Go ahead. We would, we would thou shouldest do for us whatsoever we shall desire. Read that again a little bit slower. Con. It says, uh, Salak, it says, saying, Master, we would. You should say, what would? It says, Master, uh, we would that. It's a wire right there, but okay. that. Okay, I'll start over. It's Pretty much he's saying, what would, what, what would that we should do? You know what I'm saying? This is old English. Right, right. What would that we should do for us whatsoever we shall desire? Right, go ahead. And he said unto them, what would he that I should do for you? Right, so Yahweh saw is like, look, what is it that I should do for you? You asking, you asking, you asking something that you want from me. What, what do you want me to do for you? Go ahead. They said unto him, Grant unto us that we may sit one on the right hand and the other on thy left hand uh -huh. in thy glory. So right, James and John was like, look, man, what we asked you, because you know, uh, uh, John was uh, the closest. John was Yahweh's favorite, but Peter was the one the most high chose. So there was different relationships that Yahweh had with the different disciples. So James and John came to him like, look, you know, in the kingdom, man, it's the habit, whereas, you know, I can sit on your right hand and I can sit on your left. That's pretty much what they were asking. Go ahead. It says, but Yahweh Shah said unto them, you know not what you, you ask. Yahweh Shah is like, look, man, you don't know what you're asking. You don't know what you're asking for, man. You don't know what you're about to go through. You don't know the cup that you're going to have to drink to follow after me. That's pretty much what Yahweh Shah is saying. Go ahead. It says, uh, can you drink of the cup that I drink of? Right, he's saying, can you drink of the cup that I drink of? Are you able to take the persecutions and the afflictions that I gotta go through? This is what our Lord and Savior is telling James and John. Because the Lord knew that he was at, he had to go on the cross and die and go through a painful, horrible death through faith. Go ahead. And be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. Right, and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. with, with Yahweh Shai's baptism was what? Death, beating, torture, persecution. Go ahead. And they said unto him, we can, and Yahweh Shai said unto them. Yeah, they said, look, they said, we can. Feel like, yeah, well, I'm down. Yeah, we, we can go through. Go ahead. He said unto them, and uh, ye shall indeed drink of the cup that I drink of. He said, ye shall indeed Ye shall indeed drink of the cup that I shall drink of. Go ahead. It says, uh, pretty much Yahweh shall making it known, like, look, you gonna go through it. Okay, you said you said that you got it. You said that you're gonna do it. Okay. Or you're gonna indeed drink of the cup that I gotta go through. 
It says, and with the baptism that I am baptized with all, right. shall ye be baptized. Right, and you're going to be baptized with the same baptism that I got to go through. I think that's it on that. Oh, yeah, it says, but to sit on my right hand and on my left hand, it is not mine to give. Right, but to sit on my right hand and to sit on my left, that is not mine to give. So pretty much that wasn't up to Yahweh Shah to say who was going to sit on his right hand and who was going to sit on his left hand. That's up to Yahweh. You know? But the point that I'm trying to get it is that going back to Acts, the 12th chapter, of the second verse, read that again. This is the precept. This is Acts chapter 12, verse 2. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. Uh -huh. and, be and because he saw it please the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Right, so he killed James with the edge of the sword, which is what? That baptism that Yahweh Shah told him about in Mac uh, Mark the 10th chapter. He said, ye shall indeed drink of this cup. So James drank of that cup. He got killed for the word. All right. All right, go ahead. Then were the days of unleavened bread. And, we, and when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four Praetorians for 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 right. of soldiers to keep him, intending, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Right, so pretty much now Paul, that's like now Paul, uh, now Peter, he had got locked up. They killed James already, and Herod took Peter. And they locked Peter up, and they had he had a quaternion of soldiers around him, which is four soldiers. You got two soldiers in the actual cell with you, chained up, and then you got two outside your door. So there was a, he was in a situation where as he knew, the, and pretty much in his mind, he like, well, shit, I know I'm about to get delivered. I'm, I'm, I'm about to get delivered up, man. I, I might, I probably won't die. You know what? It is what it is, man. I fought the good fight, right? Go ahead. Verse five. Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto Yahweh for him. Right. He said the, the prayer was made without ceasing for Peter. Hold that again, Luke chapter 18, uh, verse 1. Prayer was made without ceasing. Because you gotta think, man, when we in when we're in dire situations, brothers, when we're in situations of uh, tribulation, bad times, where it could be, where it could be, you know, financial, uh, uh, uh health mental, demons fucking with us. That's when you gotta talk to the Akim. But first, before you do that, man, we gotta constantly pray. We gotta pray for one another, man. The fervent prayer of a righteous man develops much, as the scripture says, man. This is Luke chapter 18 and one. And he spake a parable unto them to this end that men ought always to, uh, to pray and not faint. Right, so Yahweh Shah was going to speak a parable. And read that, read that last part again. It says, uh, and that, it says, to this end, that men ought always to pray. Ought always to pray. Go ahead. And not to faint. And not to faint. So we, we got to always constantly be praying for one another, man. Constantly. The scripture tells us to give Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah no kind of rest, man. Yes, no rest. He's looking for us to pray to him. He's looking. He's looking for us to beg to him to to, to, uh, to deliver us out of the situation that we're in, man. You know what I'm saying? We can't. We can't do it on our own. Who are we? We little grasshoppers, little worms on a planet Earth, thinking that we can deliver our own selves out of a situation, man. No prayer. Like Apostle Paul always harps on, man. Pray. Prayer, prayer, and prayer. More prayer, pray, pray, pray. Especially coming up in these last days, man. Prayer is very, very, very important. Uh, that's it. Okay. Verse 5. Uh, select it. Verse 6. And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers uh -huh. bound with two chains. And the keepers before the door kept the prison. Right, so like I said earlier, man, he had two, he had two soldiers in the cell with him while he's sleeping. So Peter sleep. He just got locked up. You gotta think he probably got beat down. You know? He got two, he got he got two big ass chains on him. You got two guards, one in front of him, probably one behind him. Two of them outside the door. And Peter sleep. 
he like, fuck it. I'm about to go to sleep. I'm tired, you know. It's probably hella late at night or very, very, very early in the morning. Go ahead. Verse 7. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison. Uh -huh. And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. Right. So there's an angel of the Lord came within the camp, within the jail cell, and and he and he smote Peter on the side. Like, look, man, hey, get up, man, we gotta go. You know. Go ahead. Verse eight. And, and Slocky, and his chains fell off. So you gotta think the two guards that was in there. It really doesn't give the description about what was going on with the two guards. They probably either got blinded, or they could have. They probably made. They maybe ran a fear. Who knows? But the guard, but the chains fell off. You know. Oh, yeah. Verse 8, and the angel said unto him, Gird thyself and bind on thy saddles. Right. And so he did, and he said unto him, Cast thy garment about thee, about thee and follow me. Look, put your sandals on, put your garments on. We got to go. Follow me. I'm going to show you where we got to go. Oh, yeah. Verse 9, and he went out and followed him. And wist not that it was true which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. Right, so Peter at this time, he didn't even know. Peter thought that he was dreaming. He thought he was still sleeping. He didn't even know that, he, like, he thought that he was dreaming in the dream that he was escaping out of prison, but this was actually, this is, this is really happening. And this is just going, like I said, this is going into faith, man. Having that, having that constant faith, man. Go ahead. Verse 10. When they were past the first and the second ward, they came unto the iron gate that leads unto the city, which opened, which opened to them of its own accord, and they went out, and they went out and passed, and passed on thorough one street, and forth with the angel departed from him. Right. And when Peter was come unto himself, he said, "Now I know of a surety that so the Peter, 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 pretty much reasoned with himself. He got." He pretty much is awake now, right? So he reasoned with himself like, man, hold on, man. I know I wasn't tripping, man. This is really happening. Go ahead. Now I know of a surety that the Lord has sent his angel and had delivered me out of the hand of the road and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. Right, so pretty much Peter's like, I know for a surety that the angel of Yahweh Bashmi was trying to deliver me out of the situation, out of the hand of Herod. Out of the out of the hand of the man that was going to kill me, Yahweh. It wasn't it wasn't Peter that delivered himself out of that situation. It was Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai that delivered him out of that situation. So that's us now, man. We gotta be in that same stead, man. Whenever 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 the time comes of persecution, where the scripture tells us in the book of Revelations that um, I believe if somebody want to get it or find it, I believe Revelation the second chapter, how some of us are going to be cast into prison. And some of us are going to die. Be beheaded. Yeah, come, come. I believe it's Revelation. It might be like Revelation chapter 2. But we're going to be in certain situations where we're going to be in prison too. You know? Or even situations, not even like, not even at the end times, but brothers have testimonies of being delivered out of certain scenarios, man. Being delivered out of jail. You know? It's oh, 2 and 10. Two and ten. Oh, okay, come, yeah, come. Two and ten, Oh, yeah, come, come. One of y'all. Okay. Revelations 2 and 10. Uh -huh. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Right. Fear don't, so don't, don't fear the things that you're going to suffer, man. Don't fear the things that's going to happen unto you, man. Don't fear, don't fear the different the different uh, fear tactics that Esau has planned, the different, uh, the different torture methods that he has planned, man. You're not supposed to fear that. Okay? Go ahead. Behold, the devil shall cast you some of you into prison. Right, so the devil, so-called white man Esau, it says shall cast some of you into prison. So some of us are gonna be cast into concentration camps, FEMA camps, you know, getting, getting uh, tortured. Some of us getting put to death, man. Ooh. It's gonna happen, so, that's, that's some brother's lot. Go ahead. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison that you may be tried and we shall have tribulation 10 days. Right, so it says, so you so you shall be tried and have tribulation 10 days, man, which is just a, a, a length of time. But it says you're gonna be tried. 
So you how about Shimmy Alshad ultimately is gonna try his elect, man. He's gonna try, he's gonna try you as gold in the furnace. As silver in the furnace, man. To see if to see, to see if you're worthy. And he's gonna he's gonna try those ones that are gonna stand stiffly in that day, man. The ones that are gonna be like, you know what, hey man, cut my head off, man. Shoot me. Go ahead and put me on the fire squad. Do what you gotta do, because I know I'm gonna come back. All through the spirit, Lord willing. Somebody can hold wisdom inside of Oh yeah. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Read that against the lock. That was a that was the main point that I was going to uh, Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Because ultimately that's the crown that we're looking for. We're looking for, we're looking for that time where Yahweh Shai is gonna come back and he's gonna personally hand give you your crown, man. It talks about that in 2nd Exodus 13 chapter, man. So if you're faithful unto death, being faithful unto death, that's easier said than done, man. I'm, I'm, I, and I'm talking right now, you know, but I pray every day that the Lord keeps the spirit on me to be able to endure the fact of being put to death, man. Had that fortitude, you know? Yeah. Had that mental fortitude like the brother said, man. Going through your mind, like, you know, do what you got, like, this, uh, we can get that count too, you know, the second back of the seven, if we have the time. This is Ecclesiasticus, uh, Sirach, chapter 2, verse uh, verse 5. For gold is tried in the fire, an acceptable man in the furnace of adversity. Right, and what is that furnace of adversity? You know what that furnace of adversity is? Uh, right? Yeah, it's like basically being in the straits. Right. Being in the straits, being in tribulations, uh, being, being in, being, uh, catching hell. Going through the afflictions that you gotta go through on this side. So read that again. Zurich chapter 2, verse 5. For gold is tried in the fire, an acceptable man in the furnace of adversity. Right, and it says an acceptable man in the furnace of adversity. It doesn't say a niggas in the furnace of adversity. It says acceptable men are gonna be put to that furnace of adversity, man. You gotta, like the brother said perfectly, you gotta be a special kind of man to go through this hell that we gotta go through. On a daily basis, constantly have to, uh, constantly have to, uh, you know, put up with your damn boss at your job. You know, have to be around homosexuals all day. See your, see your people going through eating any kind of abominable food, being niggas, not being loving towards their brothers. You know, that's a form of mental affliction. And then on top of that, man, you got these demons plaguing your mind all day, man. Go ahead. Believe in him and he will help thee. Right, believe in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shad, man. The scripture says, wait upon me and I shall rise up into the prey, man. And he says, he shall help thee. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shad is our shield and our book. He is our he is our fortitude. He is our uh he is our strong tower. Okay? The righteous are gonna run into it and gonna be safe, man. So it says, believe in me and I shall help thee. Order thy way aright and trust in him. Order thy way aright and trust in him. So you gotta order your ways aright and be firmly established and rooted in the truth, man. And you gotta trust in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh that he's gonna deliver you out of the situation or not. Go ahead. Ye that fear the Lord, wait for his mercy, and go not aside lest ye fall. Ye that fear, for, ye that fear the Lord, wait for his mercy, Go ahead and read that part, read the end, of the, end of that, the end of that again. And go not aside lest ye fall. And go not aside lest ye fall. So we gotta wait on the mercies of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, man. And I know it's it's long suffering, it's, 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 it's it seems like it seems like the Lord turned his back from us. You know what I'm saying? And that he forgot about us, but he hasn't, man. He hasn't forgot about us, man. And you can clearly see it throughout the days that you go through your daily life, man. Yeah. All the prophecies popping off left and right. You got people going crazy on the planet Earth. Wars and rumors of wars on an all-time high right now. Earthquakes on an all-time high right now. You know? We're at the end of this thing, man. So it says, wait on my mercy, man, and I shall help you, man. You gotta firmly, truly believe that. Go ahead. 
time, you know, like the brother said, you know, uh, it may seem like he, you know, he left us and stuff, but, but like I said, like Isaiah quoted, you know, uh, with everlasting mercies are like, uh, for a small moment have I forsaken thee, you know, but with, yep. uh, but with everlasting mercy uh, will I gather thee, you know. Part of that verse of how he's gathering you by the fact that you know you're Israel. Like, by the fact you know who you are, man, that's verse within itself, man. That's right. So that's how he's gathering this men right now through his word. Because at one time he did turn his back. But he said he's gonna discontinue our heritage. So now he's giving us that name back in our heritage back then. Yep, and that's and that's what it is, bro. Coming back to your heritage, it's coming back to your name. Like the brother said beautifully, man, coming back to Yasha Allah, man. That's that's beautiful, like the brother said perfectly, that's beautiful within the soul. To know that you were Israelite, to know the names of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, man, and then you got bitch ass niggas that, uh, that come across and just play with it, man. Knowing that the Most High gave you the word, he gave you the knowledge, he gave you his name, but you go and but you but you play with but you play around with it though. Take the Lord for granted. He gave you the He take this word, this gift. That you know, that Yahweh uh, Shimmy Yahweh Shah gives unto us as you know, as, as nothing. You know, and in that day, you know, they're going to be counted as nothing, right along with the evil. You know, because this is a beautiful thing that we, you know that we have become a part of, man. You know, because the Most High chose us from the beginning of the foundation of the earth, man. Right? You know, like the scriptures say, there's a lot of us that are called, but there's few of us that will be chosen. Right, right, you know. Jake go throughout their daily life playing with these, playing with the scriptures and playing with this truth like it's like it's a fad, like it's a like it's a fraternity or something, you know. And not realizing that this is this is life or death. You know, this is this is salvation. You know, this is nothing, nothing to just play with and take light, you know, in any aspect. You know what I mean? Being able to break down these scriptures and having the knowledge, wisdom, and the understanding, man, to do so, and also to teach, you know, to come out in the highways and the byways week in and week out, to be able to prophesy and actually know what you're talking about, you know, and be able to bring in fruit, be of good use for the Most High, that's a beautiful thing, man. That's a very beautiful thing in itself, you know. That's, that, you know, that's just all I got just back to what the brother was saying, but yeah. A lot of these so-called niggas out there, man. A lot of no, not so-called, but just straight up niggas. And that's gonna get put to death because of that, man. And the Most High has plenty of ways that He's gonna deal with you. you no, know, he, he He's the author of terror, man. You know, the author of terror. On the King of Terrors, man. You know, because a lot of Jake, man, they get this, they get this truth, and they think it's just a quick knowledge grab, man. You know, they might, they might want to get, they might want to read the scriptures and be able to break it down to, to impress. It. To impress these hoes, man. You know what I'm saying, or, or to impress their friends, or you know, man. You know how, man. You know how Jake is, man. Vain glory. Have vain glory, which want to fill their own belly, man. But you don't really read the scriptures to actually understand what you're reading to apply it to your daily life, man. <laughs> this is the key. This is the key to salvation, man. But you got people out here playing games, man. All hell getting ready to break loose on the planet Earth. World War III is about to happen. America's about to be destroyed. That's right. right. But everybody's walking up and down the street thinking that everything is cool and, and happy and jolly, man. Right. And then and it's mainly it's mainly our people. And then it'd be the ones that's, that's in the sect of Israel, man. We're playing too many damn games, man. But that's why the, the elect, when it talks about in the scriptures, the Sirach, the second chapter, the brother got, the ones that are gonna wait for his mercy, man, the war going, man, look. The Lord gonna help those men, man. When there ain't no food out here, when there ain't no water, when you got people out here running around killing one another for 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 a piece of sliced bread, bro, the elect are gonna be eating in that day, man. Absolutely. When everybody out there crying and screaming, it says, man, the elect are gonna be laughing and rejoicing in that day, man. Yep. And you gotta firmly believe that, cause that's gonna happen, man. Well, yeah, we gonna be scared, but it's gonna be a time where look. We gonna be good, Lord willing, man. Yeah, the raven gave a man the food. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Lord, Even in the wilderness, man, when the Lord, when the Lord made all them quails drop down in the ground, bro. The scripture says, man, that when you look as far as to the left and as far as to the right that you can see in the wilderness, it was nothing but quails on the ground, bro. 
You know what I'm saying? So the most time provide bringing water out of rocks. You know what I'm saying? Most high can make a way, man. Even when it's a time where you think, man, shit. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no food, man. What am I gonna do, man? Lord, Lord, just make a deer just run across and just stand. You know what I'm saying? Or you might even see a lamb in the street. Who knows, bro? You know what I'm saying? You gotta trust and believe that, man. You gonna be good, man. But you gotta do His will. To the best of your ability, man. You gotta follow what He says, man. And if I can say this too, you also gotta have faith and believe in these scriptures, man. You gotta believe in what he says, man. You gotta have faith. Because just that that little inkling of faith, man, can be the big difference between you, you know, uh, making it out and you ended up in a concentration camp. Man. You know, that little bit of faith, believing in these scriptures, believing in the Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man, that could be the difference of you dying in the streets or getting beamed up, man. You know? You applying these scriptures to your daily life and just everything that you do, that's gonna be the difference between whether or not you get shot down in the street, or you get you get murked over a can of peaches, you know what I'm saying? Or you get captured for booties, you know, and sold to, to the highest bidder, or given away for a bottle of wine in that in that time, man. Or given away for, for a little small travel pack of shampoo, man.